In this video, I'm going to show you how the background size property lets you scale background images. The background image in the body of this page is 1800 pixels wide and 1230 pixels high. Its background position has been set to center top. At the moment, it doesn't use the background size property, so the image is displayed at its normal dimensions. How much you see depends on the size of the browser window. So let's have a look at it quickly in a browser. The center of the background image remains fixed and you see more or less of each side depending on whether I expand or reduce the size of the browser. Let's go back to Dreamweaver. The background size property can take a value in pixels or a percentage. So let's start with that. This image is 1800 pixels wide, so I'll give it a background size of 450 pixels, which is one quarter of the size. And let's just see what that does in live view. What has happened is that the image is now one quarter of its original width, but the height remains the same. As a result, the image's aspect ratio is not maintained. In other words, its proportions are distorted. To maintain the aspect ratio, you need to specify a value for the height as well. So let's just do that. 308 pixels. And you'll see now that the aspect ratio has been maintained. So if you want to use a fixed size, either in pixels or in percentages, you need to specify the width first, followed by the height. The latest versions of all browsers support background size, but to keep Firefox 3.6 happy, you need to also use the Moz vendor specific prefix. So I'll just copy that and add Moz there, hyphen Moz. So that'll keep Firefox 3.6 happy. If you know the size of the element that takes the background image, using the actual dimensions is fine, but often you don't know what the size will be. For these cases, the background size property provides two keywords, contain and cover, which are designed to preserve the image's aspect ratio automatically and scale it to fit the element. Contain scales the image to the largest size to fit both its width and height into the background. Now that sounds simple enough, but look what happens if I use it on this page. The image has hardly changed in size, in fact it shrunk a little bit. That's because this page contains only this div with a small amount of text in it, so the page doesn't actually have very much height. So to contain the background image's height in this small page, the larger size is actually smaller than the original. On the other hand, cover scales the background image to the smallest size it needs to be to include both the width and the height while maintaining its aspect ratio. Let's see how that works. Change it from contain to cover. What's happened now is that the background image has expanded to cover the background. This is the smallest that it needs to be to get in both the width and the height. And if I increase the width of the page, you see that the height also increases. So it sounds rather paradoxical, but the idea is that it needs to be that size to cover the background of the element. So the lesson from this is that when using the background size property on the body, you should normally use cover. With elements other than body, you should either use the actual size or you should use cover if the background image is smaller than the element itself. Otherwise, it won't fit both the width and the height of the element. Scaling background images with background size is very useful, but the contain and cover keywords can be confusing. I hope this video has helped demonstrate the difference. And one final point to remember, to support Firefox 3.6, you need to use the Moz vendor-specific prefix in addition to the standard background size property.